so this is a series that I want to do that I go over stuff that the game doesn't teach you that it's not in the, the tutorial or anything so hopefully some of you might learn something from this series like this is just going over mechanics going over little facts or situations or tech that people might not know that the game doesn't go over so hopefully this video teaches you something and if you like the content make sure to you know obviously like and subscribe and all that and uh, yeah enjoy the video I'm gonna make a series out of it I'm gonna go over five topics per video so this is obviously the first entry so let's see how it goes enjoy to start with in my opinion this is one of the biggest things that separates a, a good player from a very good player is the ability to sidestep see a whiff and then whip punish rather than committing to a sidestep button or a sidestep launcher preemptively to whip punish now why this is really important to master is because let's take some moves in this game have like really weird phantom tracking if you sidestep into a button because sidestep into a button actually enlarges your hurt box means you're more likely to get clipped by moves so i'm going to show this brian's 43 is one of the notorious examples of this so as you can see i can sidestep in either direction no problem if i don't press a button however if i sidestep into a button the move suddenly tracks right the move suddenly tracks because i press the button enlarging my hurt box means i'm going to get clipped by this move so like i said earlier it's super important to be able to sidestep see the whiff first and then visually confirm it and then whip punish from there it's a very important skill to master and it is extremely difficult it's particularly online as well so yeah um so yeah brian's 43 is notable for this Mardux Offer 3 is another example. Like, Mardux Offer 3, even if he sidestep that button, it can catch you from his back, for example. But otherwise, if you do a tiny step, it's gonna whiff. So it's it's a weird mechanic in the game, but it does make sense at the same time. So yeah, if you can empty sidestep with punish rather than like just committing to a button from step, it will help you a lot in the long term. So what I want to talk about next is hop over dang trap tech traps at the wall. Now these kind of setups are easily more accessible if you play on arena stage or dragon's nest stage or similar stages with like angled walls. Or if you carry your opponent's off axis to the wall and how you can easily notice this is if there's a bit of space behind the opponent allowing you to jump over and access this. So let me show an example of card arena. Now I want to talk about something else as well. If you, it, it takes you six frames to hold back and block in time. So what happened there was I wasn't able to block Katarina's 15 frame while standing launcher because I was holding back. However, not now not not a lot of people notice and even less apply it. But if you actually hold, if you actually tap forward, you will block 15 frame moves. So only up to 14 frames guaranteed. So if you hold forward or tap forward, you will actually block 15 frame moves in that situation. Not a lot of people know that. So it's people doing 15 frame launchers, it's kind of fake. So um there are exceptions to this rule, like characters like Raven, Shayu, Lei, like these back turns characters, the way they move from back turn is different. So rules are gonna be different for those characters. But for normal characters, it's gonna be this is the situation. Now, I will make Katarina do a 14 frame move, and I'll try and block it. As you can see, I'm unable to block it. So, for, up to, truly, up to 14 frame is guaranteed. If you hold back, 15 frame will work, but again, it is fake. So yeah, that's the, that's the situation. At number three, what I want to talk about in this video is dick jab into standing. Now, if you everyone knows if you do dick jab, you know it's ten frame, it's plus six on hit. Uh, it's a very good interrupt tool. Everyone knows this, right? It can crush under highs. It can interrupt little poke flow charts. You know, like jab into down front one. You have dick jab to interrupt this or whatever. So, what? Not a whole lot of people know, or like some people don't know. Um, you can actually do dick jab hold forward to go into standing because if you do dick jab 
Normally you're left in crouch, you know, okay? So if you do dick jab and go back to neutral, you're in crouch. If you do dick jab hold down, you're in crouch. But if you do dick jab into hold forward, you actually crouch cancel out of dick jab automatically and go into your standing move sets. Why this is important for some characters is because for say for Anna, right? You know, Anna's FC game, you know, it's really scary. We all know this. So if she does dick jab on hit and goes into mix up immediately, you know, you can step her mix up. However, if she does dick jab into hold forward, she has access to her standing moves, you know, to attract opponents like back four or um, delayed four for three, for example. Like she can do four for three from crouch, but my point is that she can she has access to her standing moves from crouch if you hold dick jab into forward. Every character can do this. It's not just Anna, but characters with notable FC game will benefit from this a bit more than others. So dick jab hold forward, you have access to your standing moves. That's kind of all I really want to go over here. So yeah, that's it. So for number four, for the fourth topic of this video, I'm going to talk about um, button but Sorry, one second. I'm just going to crouch with this character because I hate listening to her. So I want to talk about button buffering, which is um, when you hold a button and you press another button, you get the dual version of that button. So what I mean by that is um, if you hold two and then you press one afterwards, you will get one plus two. Now, this is especially useful for pad players who plays with no buttons. Now, it is kind of common knowledge, but there are some people who don't know and is. I mean, like I, get, like I said, it's not explained anywhere. So what it is, is um, Chloe is a pretty good example because her 4-2, 4 2, 1 plus 2 is a screw, right? It's her main screw in her combos. But she has a 4-2-2 two, two follow-up and a 4-2-1 follow-up, which if you try to press 1-2 at the same time, you might get a missing push. And you might get one of these by accident when you're trying to screw, right? So how you fix this is if you do for two, hold the two, hold the two, and press the one plus two, you always no sorry for two, press the one, you will always get the one plus two, no matter what, no room for error at all. So this really helps for some characters, but especially characters that have multiple follow-ups from a string when you want to do the one plus two follow-up. So Chloe is a very good example of that. So yeah, so you press 4 2, hold the 1, no, 4 2, hold the 2, press the 1, and you'll get the 1 plus 2. Always, always, no matter what. So this really, really helps Chloe in her um, in her screw combos. As you can see the command history, I'm holding the 2, I'm pressing the 1, so it comes out as 1 plus 2. Very vital for pad players who plays with their binds. So yeah, I hope this helps those people, because I had to use this in Tai 2 a lot. So for the last topic of the video, I want to talk about chickening. Now what chickening is, when you buffer an attack, when you buffer an input along with your attack, and your opponent does reversal, you're able to counter the chicken. So let me show, so if you do downward one, or you do three, so if you do one or three, and you buffer forward one plus three after the attack, and your opponent does reversal, you're able to counter the reversal. So this is what it looks like. And same with three as well. So that's what it would look like. And also, it's the same case for two and four. So if you do two or four, so your right limbs, you do four two plus three to counter the chicken. But now this is something that is not. I mean, I don't know if it's that known or not, but um, it's really important to do, and it just covers a lot of options. So if you do downward one, for example, right? So I downward one into Asuka's. Now look at my inputs. So I did key charge there. So I did actually did key charge the input there. So if you do key charge, it covers all the limbs. So you don't have to, you know, think about oh I have to do one plus three or I have to do two plus four depending on what limb I did. If you do key charge, it will cover all options. Now it's kind of annoying to chicken when you have inputs. Like so, if if I try to chicken. After Hihachi's downward one, I'm gonna get downward one one because I pressed one plus three, so that means I'm gonna get downward one one. So if you have a move that doesn't have any follow ups, then it's pretty good to buffer chicken afterwards because you you won't you won't get the follow ups on block, which could put you in trouble. For example, so like if I did Hihachi's um, four, for example, it doesn't have any follow ups afterwards, so I'm okay to buffer chicken afterwards because it doesn't matter on block. 
it's only gonna be four, right? I know it's a bad example, like it's not a good move, but you get you get what I mean. Like if it's a single move with no follow-ups, buffer and chicken is a really good idea afterwards. But if you do key charge, you cover all limbs at once, and it's just an ease of mind, you know, you don't have to think about one plus three, you don't have to think about two plus four. So yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell.